Hi, I'm Christian. And I'm Vera. And in this episode, we'll take you along on our exploration in the Western Alps. We're going to go up a col as far as we can with our Discovery 3. And it's rated SG 4 to 5, which is probably on the scale in America for rock crawling a 0.1. <laughs> so, hope you enjoy the video. So two years ago, we visited this fort up here. From this fort, you could see another fort on this side of the mountain. And we're gonna try to go up there, see if that road is still passable for motor vehicles. Thirteen. Thirteen at least. So this is almost stressful for me. Look how narrow this is. No, I want to get out. Oh god. <laughs> was there room? Yeah. Okay. Well, because I was rubbing on my side. Oh, okay. Oh, that's not something I want to do. Yeah, you can go back. <gasps> Thousands. So if our drive shaft breaks here, it's a lost cause. So we got to do 13 of these? Yes. This one is just as tight. Yeah. Only experienced four-wheel drive. I don't know if we should consider us experienced. Hell no. Uh -huh. I know how to crawl a curbstone in the mall. Yeah. And it said only experienced mountain drivers yeah. with their maneuverable SUVs should attack this curse. Oh of my course. god. That's what it said. Oh my god. Oh my Tour is a pretty off-road track. It is a big heavy ass car. You should have taken off the hitch. Stop! Yeah. Yeah. Stop! Stop! So excuse my breathing, I'm running up here. <laughs> we are above 2,000 meters. So you ran quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. SG4 to SG5. So unbelievable pretty. I mean the wow factor is just so high here. Oh, 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 oh. No, no, no. You need to come wider. Oh dear God. Oh my God.
quite narrow. So still four more to go and God knows how many kilometers because we just saw a hint of the fort and it's still far away. We are at Col de Malemort and at an altitude of 2,500 meters. Whoa, almost toppled over that one. Here at the fort, let's go explore it. I can't believe there are like forts every couple of meters up here. And they're all out of the 19th century from before the war. See, there's one up there. Holy cow, look how big these forts are. That's where we came from, this road down there. And we have 18 switchbacks in total. No, 19. She's looking for souvenirs. Something she can put a magnet on and put it on the refrigerator. I don't know if it's a forged nail or if it's Oh, it's a forged nail. If you show that to Robin, he will tell you how many beatings <laughs> yeah. this nail took to get manufactured. It's yeah, that's a soup. That's a hundred years old. Yeah. That's a souvenir from. I don't know why nobody cleans up after they, you know, celebrated here and spent the night. You're supposed to clean up uh, and leave it cleaner than you when you came. And wherever we go here, it looks like this. And another big mystery here in France for me is how do you manage to crap on the side of the toilet. Yeah. It's a mystery to me. How do you do that? But I got my theory yeah. for that, you know? They have these toilets without a bowl where you kind of, where you go and crunch on. And those are out of former days and uh, they are actually for hygienic reasons. And I think the people used to those kind of try to crunch on a regular toilet bowl. And that's when they miss. Maybe a French viewer can explain that phenomenon. We skip you guys us eating. So I checked our guidebook again and it says this road up to this fort here is not accessible for two track vehicles and even single track vehicles are not recommended to go there because of some tight switchbacks. Okay, I'm all dressed up, yeah. Approximate for that weather. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah, absolutely. This guy is really close. But he sits there and he's watching our discovery. I bet he never seen one up here. He's only used to what cruisers. Hopefully she's not gonna scare him away. Call the Malamort. Call the Malamort. Yeah. See down there is the discovery. This is part of a long distance hiking trail. Oh okay, yeah, they all got backpacks. So let's move on. I think that's where day hikers go up and this is where Discovery 3 drivers go up. Or maybe Toyota drivers. Think about how fit these people had to be around the 19th century to carry all that stuff up there on donkeys. I thought this is some miniature hike, but it took us 40 minutes to walk up here switchbacks. Seems to be closed. Didn't expect that. Yeah, this is sure one awesome view here. Wow. Look at that old barbed wire fence here out of the First World War. running down here until the next certain time.
Now, that was tight and I missed that one. When you run down, it doesn't look as bad. Oh my God, what? I don't like that. So wait. Oh man. So that's like a border crossing in Europe. And now we have to air up because a road section is coming up. Now we need to get a bigger air compressor. We are heading towards a Ligurian borderline road. I would call it the border ridge road. Yeah, the Ligurian border ridge road. Every European knows which road we are talking about. Looks like we got the entire Strada del Sol for us here because it's already late. So this is quite a scary road, but it's not technically difficult. You just don't want to take your eyes off the road. No, oh, that is quite spectacular. How cool. That is as cool as it gets. I just love it. Oh my god, I've never seen one of those. <laughs> so second time we got this suspension fault here and it's causing the suspension to drop. So I'm gonna clear this using the gap tool and the fault goes away. Oh my god, let's hope nobody comes by. That would be really bad. So incredible. So there sure is a lot of stuff forbidden here, but we got through it. Last vehicle, except for that one what cruiser. There's also one. Really nervous one. So it's raining right now. And we live in the again, of course. We found a cool spot. Look at that. So that's the French side. Being up high in the mountains. Oh, let's hope there's not a thunderstorm coming. And good morning. Looks like we placed our rooftop tent opening in the right way this morning. It's quite nice. And hopefully Vera is trying to make coffee. Kommst du uns hier besuchen? We got a visitor here in the morning. Huh? I had to hit the car first. Because it's quite busy. He probably belongs to one of the overlanders here. No, I think he belongs to the uh, herders. Oh. You know, he's a herding dog. Are you checking out Vera's kitchen here in the morning? Only place where there was no wind. She had to cook in here. So yeah, you got a friend for the entire day now. Looks like he likes that diesel smell back there. Cause that's where he picked his rest spot. I bet because he's only used to Toyotas. Make sure we don't drive over the door. It's still coming. <laughs> Shouldn't have given him that German sausage. Yeah. yeah, I wonder how far he's gonna follow us. He's gonna have to walk all of that back again. Oh my god. So it's 8.20 in the morning and we're leaving our camp spot and we're still high up in elevation. We continue on and travel now the Ligurian border ridge road. The free part, not the tall part. That's all I have to say. Yeah, okay. That. So there are so cows. There are cows on the road. At least they don't wear any belts because otherwise that would have been annoying at night. There's nothing more annoying than cow belts in the Alps. 
he's not quite as friendly <laughs> as the other one. And we're following two Suzuki Jimnies. Those, those two Suzuki's are actually quite the perfect car for these roads in the Western Alps. <laughs> what I find quite amazing is that you easily confuse a small Suzuki Jimny out of the distance with a Mercedes-Benz G-Class. Oh, there's a lot of rockfall. It's incredible. I'm gonna run down ahead to get some exercise in. We apparently have to go down there, but first we'll go up a pass. here in Italy when you get around these really tight corners and you can't look into it you use your horn before you go in because they don't drive they fly they will fly around this corner and hit your door so this is one of those typical Italian mountain towns here it's all cramped on top of this mountain and uh, getting a parking spot in there is like trying to get a parking spot in downtown Manhattan. So this is an interesting road. It goes up here and if you look all the way up there, sorry our DJI doesn't have a zoom, see the road going there you know above my wrap along the ridge and it's going into a tunnel. Maybe a Fiat 500 may not pass by the motorcycle and the mountain biker. Yeah, 450 meters long. We're Holy gonna, crap! We're gonna attack it. Yeah but at least you could back up. behind us airing down tires so probably a few minutes they will come through here too the question is doing dumb things we wanted to take some smart detour but i think if the french close off a road it got a particular reason <laughs> not like in germany you know they close it if there is like one stone missing but watch out what we had to discover here look when you come around this turn here Okay, looks like our detour did not work. Shit. But that would have been too nice if this yeah. detour would have worked. Now we gotta go, what, an hour and 15 around.
gut. We got stuck here. Sorry, the vehicle is broken. Illegally went up one of the best off-road trails in the Western Alps, but it's almost completely paved now. They, they use it as a detour. Yeah, and for this detour, it. they paved it. And the problem is now where it's paved, they made it a one-way road. And only every hour and a half you can access in. And of course, I'm not going to wait an hour and a half. For me, this is still an off-road pass. We went in. So we got now yelled at a couple of times. One time from an 18-year-old girl and some old guy. But we're in France, okay? In France, the rules are very, very stretchable. mit Geld. Gardia Finanzia, kannst du gleich dein Geldbeutel auspacken. Was hier? Du willst dich doch nicht! <lacht> The police, the police was at was the... standing at the exit, okay? Yeah, we entered illegally. So did the guy in front of us and a French guy, three kids. And he said to us, Brego. <laughs> I bet you he didn't speak any German and he was not because we're in France. They yeah, he was speak, English. They don't like to speak other languages. And he didn't want to mess with me now. Or oh, we got out of that one good. And we are now an hour early. Yeah. This is one of the biggest forts and we want to camp here tonight but it's still too early to take a camp spot because it is illegal. Oh, it's after sunset and it's getting a little chilly and windy. So, day over. So I'm trying to do my job and make a video in the morning. Vera is down there doing her job, not showing you how to make coffee. We got Texas car wash pattern. Except these are from olive trees. You know, nor the Italians or the French kind of promote these old historic sites. They are all left to fall apart for decades already. There is no sign, no nothing, what the name of this thing is and what it did and no map. Absolutely no information versus when this would be in the United States, you know, there would be a four-lane interstate going here and there would be a national historic site with four fully employed rangers and you would have a fancy map and the thing would have two museums you know you would have your campground right next to it where you can stay with your mobile home and every bit of history would be completely worked up and there would be signs and boards and plates everywhere on what this is and when it was built and who took a crap in what corner everything would be there but over here you got tons of these old historic sites and nobody really gives a damn we can take our SUV and drive around on it quite amazing I think so she wants to go on a mountain bike ride that's what we do we got our mountain bikes here on the inside of the Discovery 3 this is a really big advantage compared to having them on the trailer hitch or on the roof and they don't get dirty and we don't bottom out the trailer hitch so they don't fly forward. Yes, I'm still riding a 26 inch. I also got a 29 foot suspension with carbon frame. It's a nice bike, much better technology, but it just doesn't have the nice geometry of a 26 inch 
That's my pretty bike. Yeah, it's a 27 and a half. You know, we overlanders on the lazy ass scale, we are unfortunately on an eight, okay? But who is on a nine is somebody who takes a specialized full suspension e-bike with a lift up and rides it down. So my front wheel always got to be two inches in front of Vera's. Otherwise I'm in trouble. And uh, just to be clear, okay, I'm carrying the backpack to uh, even out the male advantage. Nice and sunny, taking us all the way over into this corner. We'll see. So this is a very famous section here. Those are our two bikes? Yeah, all e-bikes. Everybody else's e-bikes, not a single regular one. So everybody you see here is on the lazy ass scale on eight. <laughs> That looks good. Well, yeah, about two hours. Two hours. It, it was about two hours to get here. And we had lunch. And now we're gonna return. This is about halfway. And there's our LR time sticker here on the post. What time is it? Two o'clock. Okay, so it was 9.20 to 2. So this is the oil pressure after a really long mountain climb. Above one bar. Try to get that with 5W30, you got no chance. This is when the car is really hot and you really stress the engine. And it's still good with 5W40. Mm. Yep. I always lose my marker. Okay, so that's it for our little video this week. Hope you enjoyed this exploration in the Western Alps between Italy and France, and mainly France. We'll see you next Sunday.